Hi, I'm Fraser Douglas, the Avid Tent Camper. Today, I want to start a two-part video series talking about the history of modern recreational camping tents. I want to present this information because recreational camping tents have played an important role in American family history and because recent books are not preserving important details about these tents. In fact, recent camping books have presented inaccurate, incomplete, and sometimes confusing information about the various different types of tents. And so I want to try to set the record straight in these two videos. In this first video, I want to explain the difference between cabin tents, wall tents, and umbrella tents. In the second video, I will describe five more popular tent designs that are used in uh, modern recreational camping. First, let me give you a little background about tents. Ancient nomadic tribes lived in tents many years before the birth of Jesus. The Old Testament mentioned tents in a half a dozen verses. In the New Testament, the book of Acts stated that the Apostle Paul was a tent maker. Armies have used tents for centuries. Here in America, many early Native American people lived in tents at least part of the year. Early American explorers, pioneers, and cowboys also slept in tents between 1500 and 1850. Initially, these early tents were made out of animal skins and then later heavy canvas and wooden poles. But in 1960, nylon, polyester, and aluminum made tents lighter and more portable. First, let me talk about cabin tents. From about 1900 to 2010, the term cabin tent had a clearly defined meaning. A large wall tent with screen windows and a sewn-in floor. But in 2010, several tent makers and book authors began to expand their meaning of the term cabin tent to include all large family tents with near vertical walls and considerable headroom. But I contend that this expanded meaning of the term cabin tent is confusing and should not be perpetuated. And that the traditional meaning of a wall tent with screen windows and floors should be used for historical and structural accuracy. Early wall tents date back to the 1700s and were used as temporary quarters for military operations. Initially, they were non-freestanding tents that had a high center ridge pole that was supported by two vertical poles. Their vertical sidewalls were pulled out in both directions from the center ridge to create a gently pitched roof. The side wall stood two to six feet high. In 1908, the English camping pioneer T.H. Holden used the term cabin to refer to one of his new wall tent designs. In 1916, Abercrombie and Fitch catalog offered wall tents in 11 different sizes with windows, mosquito netting, sod cloths, and floors as options. In the 1960s, L.L. Bean made large wall tents with multiple rooms and called them cottage tents. This photo shows my first store-bought tent, bought in 1967. It is a small military surplus wall tent 
that was probably used to house senior enlisted men during World War II and the Korean War. These tents were erected by first staking the edges to the ground, sliding the ridge pole inside the tent, and then pushing the ridge pole and the tent roof up into position with the two vertical poles. Initially, these tents had no floors, windows, or netting. In 1977, the book Trailside Shelters described cottage tents as large, comfortable tents suited for a long-term fixed camp and showed a sketch of a wall tent with multiple rooms, screened windows, floor, and large awning. I bought this tent in 1985. Notice that it has a modified pole design and newer nylon or polyester fabrics, but it still has the classic ridge pole that characterizes the cabin tents and wall tents. By the 1990s, most camping authorities were using the term cabin tent to refer to large wall tents with tall vertical walls, large interior space, screen windows, and floors. For example, uh, Camping Made Easy, published in 2001 by Michael Reuter, stated that a wall tent was sometimes called a canvas cabin tent. In 2006, Backpacker Tent and Car Campers Handbook by Tilton and Hostetter also stated that a wall tent is sometimes called a cabin tent. But around 2010, several makers and camping authorities changed the meaning of the term cabin tent for no apparent reason. For example, Coleman called their new instant tent a cabin tent despite the fact that it clearly had an umbrella tent frame. And the Camping Bible, published in 2013 by Holtzman, defined a cabin tent as any tent with tall, nearly vertical sides, a roof with a shallow pitch, and standing headroom, without mentioning wall tents at all. I contend that this expanded meaning of the term cabin tent is confusing and that the traditional meaning of a cabin tent as a wall tent with windows and floors should be retained. Some good examples of modern cabin tents include this Kodiak canvas cabin, this Trek canvas cabin, and this Coleman Weathermaster. Now, let me talk about umbrella tents. Umbrella tents are smaller teepee-like tents that are structurally similar to larger French marquee tents, such as this one used by George Washington. They have a high center peak that was initially supported by a single six to seven foot high center pole with ribs near the top that extended out to lift the ceiling up and push the sides, the sides out to a more vertical position, thereby creating more interior space with a small amount of canvas. Umbrella tents emerged as a popular family camping tent in the 1920s and remained so for about 40 years. Several old family camping photos taken during this time show these tents. They were made by Holgard, Brooks, Montgomery Ward, Sears, and other companies. In 1935, the Brooks Company catalog offered a standard umbrella tent and a two-way umbrella tent that could be supported by the traditional single center pole 
or by two exterior poles. By the mid-1940s, most umbrella tents were supported by four to six slightly bent steel exterior side poles that converged at a high center peak. In 1969, America's camping book by Cardwell predicted that umbrella tents would eventually eventually replace wall tents as the best all-around family camping tent because they were more stable than other tent designs, especially in windy weather. In 2000, Eureka offered the headquarters as a large umbrella tent. But in 2010, the Coleman Company confused the definition of umbrella tents by making this modified umbrella tent, but calling it an instant cabin. These tents were clearly supported by four or six vertical side poles that bent over the roof to pull it up and out and then converged at a high center peak. Within the next few years, other companies modified the umbrella tent design and call their modifications cabin tents. Some other tents, such as this Pahaki Green Mountain, replaced the upper pole sections of their umbrella tents with flexible fiberglass poles to stretch out the roof, but otherwise these tents continue to use rigid aluminum umbrella type side poles to support the roof and side walls. But like Coleman, they call these modified umbrella tents cabin tents simply because they had vertical side walls and more headroom. Now I'm not suggesting that the umbrella tent is inferior to the cabin tent. To the contrary, I believe the umbrella tent is a more stable tent design. But I believe that the distinctions between these two tents should be made in order to understand their respective strengths and limitations and in order to design better tents in the future. This new Eureka Jade Canyon is an umbrella an umbrella tent that has a very nice light system. Be sure and watch the second video in this series in which I'll talk about bell tents, A-frame tents, open front tents, dome tents, and tunnel tents.